Let's talk about why nations actually produce what they produce. There is a theory out there. It's a trade theory. It comes best to explaining international trade. This trade theory is based entirely on economics. And it is called comparative advantage. The book gives you a very detailed definition. But what comparative advantage really comes down to is do what you do best and trade for the rest. If we look at the U.S., we grow crops very well. We're very good producers of food. We're very good producers of technology. We may not build all the technology, but we do invent it, and we're very good at that. Okay? So if America can produce food and technology very well, let's look at another country, Japan. What does Japan do well? Japan is very good at miniaturizing and producing efficiently electronic goods. Can they produce food well? Of course not. They don't have enough room, physical space, a lot of foreign investment pouring into that country in order to get that. They are actually being able to invest some money now because of that. And that's what you see in these poor nations. The only way for them to get out of this hole is to attract money from outside. Um, I'm sure you're aware that you can actually invest in foreign nations now. And that's where that comes from. It's the whole explanation of why rich countries continue to get richer. It's because we can continue to put money away and improve our technology, improve our resources. We can do that because we have disposable income. Those poor nations that are barely scraping by don't have it. And they continue to get deeper and deeper into that hole. Now, something that is very alarming to many economists. When I started teaching this class about six years ago, these numbers were very different. We saw consumer goods only comprising 67% of our output. Investment was at 19%. Meaning that people put a lot more money away and consumes less. It's alarming. It only looks like a couple percentage points, but when you're looking at a GDP of $13 trillion, what is one? That's not exactly accurate. It's not something that I would pay a lot of attention to. If I paid an American worker 60, pay an American worker $60,000 a year. Call this U.S. work. And then I'll have a Mexican worker that I pay, I will say $20,000 a year. We'll give them a good salary. If I have a Mexican that'll work for $20,000 a year. Obviously, just based on these numbers, I would locate in Mexico. Here's the issue, though. You forget the other half of this equation. Let's say this American worker can produce 100 units. This guy is producing 20. This person in Mexico. Which is more expensive now per unit? Got to keep that in mind. It is not wages that determine these things. It's productivity. Output per unit of input. That's what we need to look at. If we look at the jobs that we've lost, most of those are lower skill jobs. The higher skill jobs that require the higher productivity, we've kept here in the U.S. And it's because of this. Companies don't look at wages, they look at productivity. How much money does it cost to produce each unit? Not how much is it getting, um, not how much is it you're just paying the people. They look at per unit costs. Now, why is it that America is so much more productive? Because in reality, we are the most productive workforce in the world. We're the highest paid, and it's because we're the most productive. How do we do that? Two big things here. Number one is we invest heavily in what we'll call capital stock. And that means our machinery and equipment. We invest very heavily in machinery and equipment. We don't do jobs 
with our hands. We do them with machinery. In the U.S., we are what we call capital intensive. The U.S. is capital intensive meaning that we produce things with a higher proportion of machinery than labor. Okay? An example of that, if we look at farming in different countries, if we look at, we'll start in China, when they go to farm, typically they're plowing a field using an ox. How long would it take to plow an acre of ground using an ox? You know, you're looking at several, several hours, if not a day. In the U.S., when we go to plow a field, we're using a tractor. We're probably plowing 50 rows at a time. We're talking a matter of minutes to plow that same field. We typically think of agriculture as being very labor-intensive. The reality is it's very capital-intensive. Look at the machinery that you see out there in the agricultural markets. It's unbelievable. Capital intensive. That's why the U.S. is very, very productive. The next thing are investments in what we call stock. We think of people as being another resource. Our human capital. Our human capital is the knowledge and skills of our workforce. One of the things you see in the U.S. that you don't see worldwide is mandatory education and accessibility to higher education. That level is not seen in the rest of the world. The reason for that is as we can continue to build the knowledge and skills of our workforce, we become more productive. The reason the U.S. is extremely productive when it comes to production comes down to these two things. We use machinery, and we have highly skilled people. That's why the U.S. is so productive. Now, another term that you'll see thrown around in economics is that of factor mobility. In the United States, people can change jobs, resources can change places. Every resource from one industry is transferable to others. If it, an example would be, if my business goes bankrupt, my employees are just not going to sit there. They're going to go get jobs elsewhere. The easier that factor mobility is, the better your economy will run. So we need to keep that in mind. 